Good morning from sleepy Oxford, where the coffee hasn't quite kicked in yet. I'm Duncan Malloy, I'm Osprey's board and card game developer, and I'm here today to give you guys a quick rules explanation for Odin's Ravens. Um, we've already set up part of the board, so I'm going to show you the rest of the board setup, and then we can get straight to it. We've set up 12 of the 16 path cards that make up the board, so I'll just set up the last four now. The important thing to remember when you're placing these cards is to make sure that no two of these symbols in a row are the same. If they are, just either rotate the card or draw a new one. So that one there is okay. That one similarly will rotate. This one we will also rotate. And this last one, no matter how we place it, they're going to be two in a row. So just pull a new card and there you go. And that's it. That is the board setup. So with a large deck of cards, you've got a different racetrack every time. Now, uh, I've separated out the two player decks, so you've got each player has a separate flight deck and Loki deck, and a separate playing piece, obviously. And you set up your playing pieces at the start of the path. So my goal for my piece is to move down one side of all of these path cards until I get to the end, at which point I swap onto the other side and move the entire way back down. And my final position, my goal, is to get to this space here. Similarly for the other piece, their goal, is to come the opposite direction and back down and get to this space here. To do that, we're going to use our flight cards to move our ravens along the path and our Loki cards to make the path easier for us to do that job. At the start of the game, you draw five cards, taking them from whichever deck you like. So I'm going to draw four flight cards. One, two, three, four. And a Loki card. To move onto a path space, I simply just take the matching card, spend it, and move onto that space, and I discard the flight card. Alternatively, if I have no matching cards, I can play any two of a kind to move onto any space. So I could also have played those two to move onto this space here. If I have no matching cards at all, I don't have to play any of my cards, and I just draw three cards at the end of my turn. There's no limit to how many cards I can play, but no matter how many I play, I draw three cards up to a maximum of seven. When you're moving through spaces and spending these cards to move, rather than moving on to a single space, what you're actually doing is moving to the end of a row of matching spaces. So for example, if I was here and I spent one card which matches this type, I would move to this space. Or similarly, I could spend any two of a kind and move from here to here. How do we make rows of several of the same type appear in a row? This is where the Loki cards come in. So, we've got four types of Loki cards, two copies of each. One, two, three, four. This particular one lets you either rotate a card 180 degrees or remove a card entirely from the path. And it's important to note, each of these has two different options on them and it's an either or. You spend the card and take one of these two actions. So in this case, I could either rotate this like so and suddenly have three in a row, or I could have removed it entirely and made this piece shorter and this piece two in a row. So if there's ever a gap in the path, you just ignore it as though it wasn't there. In doing this though, I've also made my opponent's path shorter. But I've also made my own path shorter coming back around. So there's a give and take there. This particular one lets you either swap any two cards, but keep the orientation. So for example, I could have swapped this card and this card to give me that three in a row. Or, I can slide, so I could do this, shortening this path by one space and also giving me my three in a row here. For this particular card, I can either move my raven one space forward or move my opponent's raven one space backwards. This is the exception to the rule about rows. This is only moving one space. Moving to the end of a row only counts when you're spending flight cards. And for this particular card, I either draw two extra cards and continue my go from either the flight deck or the Loki deck, 
or I draw one card from the path deck and add a loop. So I'm going to take this card here and I'm going to place it here for the sake of argument. And what that means is ravens coming in both directions now have to fly through this loop before they can continue onwards. So it will be one, two, three, four spaces rather than one, two. Obviously, as with everything, this applies in both directions. So the options to change the path are all quite straightforward and quite obvious in the ways that they make life either harder or easier. But it's important to remember, in all cases, the route you're taking is the reverse of the route your opponent is taking. So everything you do to make the path shorter or easier, you're also doing the same for your opponent. So the trick to this game is to try and maximize your own benefit while minimizing the benefit for your opponent and playing a little bit of push and pull of, do I just go for the chance and make a break for it? Or do I play more carefully and more slowly and try and set traps for my opponent rather than just making a break for the end? The only important thing to remember about the Loki cards is that it is possible for them to interact by using the loop card and the slide card together. What will happen is either somebody will place a loop and somebody will want to slide a card on top of that loop, or alternatively, somebody will have slid a card and might want to place a loop over it. In both of these cases, that is allowed, and what happens is that you just ignore the space that's been covered and either overwrite part of the loop, in this case, so that this space becomes part of the loop, or just ignore it, in this case, so that this space, again, becomes part of the loop. This is important to remember because you cannot use a Loki card on a space which currently has a raven on it. So, for example, nobody is allowed to rotate this card because there's currently a raven on it. The only thing you need to remember about the way that these two would interact is you treat the card that's on the bottom as though it also had a raven on it. So this card is frozen in place and cannot be moved by any of the Loki cards. The uh, only other thing I think we need to note is ties. So whichever, if whichever player went first gets to the end first, the other player has one more turn to try and get to their end of the flight path. If they manage it, then the winner is the player who has the most cards in hand. So the player who has gotten to the end using the fewest cards wins. If there's still a tie, it's a tie. And you guys are going to have to have a rematch. And that's it. The game is quite straightforward, but extremely fun. If you have any queries on the rules, do give us a shout in the comments below, or you can find a link to the full PDF of the rulebook in the description, as well as a link to where you can buy the game. Please do subscribe for more videos from Osprey Games, and we'll see you the next time.